Hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to do a tutorial on how to make a Batman flag. I'm doing this part for my superheroes um, series of superhero flags. First I'm going to do Batman um, and I'm going to kind of show you step by step how to do it in vCarve desktop. And if you have any questions just leave them in the comments and I'll try to get to everybody's questions. All right, first, um, as discussed before in previous videos, I build everything off my main <clears throat> United States flag template. You should already know how to do this or have this. This is so you can just build off this template, okay? First things first, <clears throat> we need to pull our Batman stuff in, okay? So, we're going to go in here on the left-hand side of VCarve import bitmap okay this is going to be a picture <clears throat> okay i'm going to pull in a picture of the bat symbol i'm going to use two different ones let me just grab it real quick okay so this is like this an older version of the batman logo it's going to be a jpeg image file of it Okay, so we want to move that. I always like to move it off the flag. You don't have to, but it makes it easier if you do it. Um, go into Select Objects. I'm going to move it. So I click on there, and I just move it. Then I'm going to expand it. Okay. I want it to be pretty big. All right, from here, <clears throat> we need to make a vector out of this image. So you're going to highlight it, select it, see the purple box. It indicates that the image has been selected. You're going to go over to the left under create vectors. Be a little thing, it looks like a bird or something. Um, it's called trace bitmap. So you're going to click on it. Choose black and white. And it's already set right here for the threshold. It has it at 0 0.50. Now what I like to do, I'll just do a preview. So scroll down see the preview buttons lighten up click on it it creates the vector okay that looks pretty good I'm not gonna do much to, to change it I just hit apply and then close <clears throat> so I like to get the image out of there so I'll just highlight it again and then just hit delete okay so now it's just left with the vector if you look at it here it's one vector okay so I'm gonna separate these so I'm gonna go down to ungroup on the left-hand side, under Edit Objects, okay, now it's going to be three separate vectors. <clears throat> what I want to do is run a uh, check on it real quick. So under Edit Objects, there's a little checkbox here. <clears throat> I click on it, vCarve mode, search selected. It checks for any errors or anything in the vector. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so what I want to do is <clears throat> first... See all these stars? Here, I'll bring it up. I want to get rid of all these stars. But I want to replace them with the bat, the Batman logo. Okay? So instead of 50 stars, I'm going to have 50 of these bats. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy. So highlight the bat logo. Okay? Actually, I'm going to switch it up. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put this whole Batman logo up here where the stars are. So I'm just going to replace that completely. So let's highlight all the stars. We're going to delete it. Then we're going to highlight all three vectors. We're going to move it. And we're going to place it where the stars were. Okay. So we just got to shrink it. <clears throat> There's all these little dots on the side that you can kind of grab it and change the shape of it the size I usually just grab the corner I pull it in and I'll grab the image okay I'll kind of center it a little I gotta play around with it it's still too big shrink it up some more that looks good move it <clears throat> actually it's still a little too big so drop it down a little Okay, that looks good um, for right now. So I want to center it in that box. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle. So I'm going to go on the left-hand side under Create Vectors. I'm going to draw a rectangle. I just hit Create. It'll bring one up here. Okay, see it? So I'm going to grab it. I'm going to move it down kind of over here to make this bigger. And then I'm just going to grab the edges of it until it locks in place, see? And I want to get it all the way right there, boom, right on the vector. Okay, and do this on all four sides. So that'll make a perfect rectangle around it. And I'm going to center the logo in this box. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so it looks good. So select all the vectors again. And I'll tell you why I separated the vectors in a minute, okay? <clears throat> all right, click on it. And then we're going to click the outer box. And we're going to go to Transform Object. We're going to align Selected Object to the vector. Not the, to the material, but we're going to align it to the selection. And we're going to click the middle one, and that centers it. Did you see that? Here, I'll do it again. So Control Z, it'll bring you back one move. Brings it back. So if you can see it, it's highlighted. I don't know if my screen is catching this right. But you click right here under center, click the middle one, and it centers the image. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to unselect that. We don't need this. Eh, we'll, we'll save that because we might have to recenter it. All right, <clears throat> so what I don't like are these, these loops. They're like a little off. So I'm going to highlight them. I'm going to group them together. Actually, I'm going to ungroup these real quick. I don't want both of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight it. The inner one, I'm going to delete it. Okay, and then I'm going to expand this a little bigger. And this is all with your preference, however you want it. You don't have to do it this way. This is how I want it to look. So I'm just going to expand that a little bit bigger. Okay. And we're going to center that. Oh, whoops. Uh, we're going to align it to the box right there. I like it. All right. And then we're going to center this one to this. All right, so that's perfectly center. All right, so now I can delete the box, the outer box. So I clicked it, it's highlighted, hit delete, it's gone. All right, some of you might be thinking, oh, that, that doesn't look right. It looks kind of big. Um, it's close to the, the edges. I'm not going to cut all the way to the edge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a pocket cut. <clears throat> so... I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to set up the cut on this right now. Okay, so I'm going to click on this. Click on that. And then I'm going to go to <clears throat> to your right-hand side, Toolpath Operations. We're going to click Pocket Toolpath. Okay, I'm going to <clears throat> make it 0 0.075 inches deep. I'm going to change the tool from a quarter inch end mill <clears throat> to a one eighth inch end mill. Okay, it's not showing on my screen, but that's what I'm picking. So I got the one eighth inch end mill, and it's going to be at 18,500 RPMs for spindle speed, 85 inches per minute feed rate, and a 40 inches per minute plunge rate. I'm going to do two passes. Okay, I'm going to hit calculate, oh, that's not supposed to be there, alright, so calculate, it's going to pocket all the blue and just leave the Batman symbol raised, so we're going to do a preview visible toolpath.
looks pretty good. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the colors of the sign to what I want it to look like when I'm done. All right, so to do that, you're in the preview tool path mode. I'm changing it from dark wood, right-hand corner at the top, scroll all the way up, use solid color. <clears throat> I want this whole sign to be black, and then I want parts of yellow in it, okay? So follow me here. I had some questions on this on one of the Facebook groups, so I'm going to change the color of the toolpath. So down where it says toolpath, on the right-hand side and the bottom, see how it's highlighted in blue? Okay, make sure that's highlighted. Scroll back up. Where it says machined area color, you're going to click toolpath color, and then you're going to pick the color. I want it to be yellow for Batman. And you click on it, and then it adjusts it. So after I cut it out and then I paint it, it's going to look like that, that part. Okay. Um, the next part is we're going to do the stripes. This can get a little tricky. Um, not too tricky, but I'll walk you through it. All right, so I do not want standard stripes. I want the stripes to look like the Batarang, okay? So like the Batman, like Boomerang, but I want it to look like a bat for each stripe. All right, to do this, I'm going to, and I already have a vector set up for this, but it's the same premise as this Batman logo in the center. You can just pull a picture off, do a trace bitmap, and go from there, okay? So I'm going to go into left-hand corner, import vectors under file operation, click on it, and I have one, it's a SVG called Batarang. So I'm going to click on it, oh, hold on, give me one second. Computer's being a little slow here. Okay. Okay, so I pulled it in. All right, you can see it right there. All right, um, for some reason, there's some weird stuff on it. Another vector pulled in. I'm going to delete it. Okay, there's the battering. I'm going to move it, get it over here. For some reason, it's crooked. I'm going to spin it around. All right, so we want, we want it to be 90 degrees. All right, so what I'm going to do is I want to use the Batarang as the stripes. So watch me closely. I'm going to move it up here to the top stripe and I'll zoom in a little so you can see okay close that up all right I want to align it with that top stripe so let's select it I'm gonna move it I'm gonna line it up with that did you see that I lined it up with the corner of the flag, but it's still too big. So we're going to shrink it. Select object size, shrink it down a little bit. I think that looks good. It's a little cockeyed, so I'm going to rotate it so it lines up. It's a little off. So move it up a little. All right. So it's perfectly lined up <clears throat> on the left-hand side, the top left corner, right there, okay? It's right there. All right, it's a little bigger than I like, but, yeah, I'm going to shrink it a little more. Hold on. Shrink it up. All right, reset it. It uh, looks like it's off a little. Let me swing it up. Perfect. Okay. It looks perfect. Okay, so to make multiple bat rings, batarangs for the stripe, we're going to do this. 
<clears throat> we're going to select it. We're going to hit Control C and then Control V. It makes a copy. So you're just going to grab the copy on top. You're going to slide it over. And you're just going to align it as close as you can to the other one right there. Okay. So we're going to Control C again, Control V. We're going to move it over. And it looks a little off. We'll fix that. <clears throat> All right, so Control C, Control V. Is there another one? Okay, so <clears throat> look, there's it's too long, it's too big. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to shrink it. Oh, sorry. First, let's highlight all of them. And we're going to make it one vector. So we're going to group. Now that doesn't make it one vector, but it does group them. But I'll show you one. I'll show you a trick in a minute. All right, so we need to change the size. So it's a little big. Let's just make it a little smaller. All right, that looks good. Now let's position it the best we can. Looks like it's cockeyed for some reason. Okay. All right, that looks good. We just got to move it up a little. Okay, perfect. All right, you guys see that? All right, so now we can... We're going to delete that stripe right there. Click on it, delete. <clears throat> One stripe done. Well, not necessarily. Here, watch. So what we want to do is ungroup these. And we're actually going to snip it. See, I'm going to zoom in. <clears throat> right now, they're overlapping. See? You see that little loop? We're going to use a snipping tool. Left-hand side, edit objects. It looks like scissors. Click on it. And then we're going to go in there and we're going to snip that out. Watch. Right here, see the scissors opens? See it? That means you can do it. All right, so we're going to open it. Snip. Snip. See what it did? It took out the, the loop and it connected the vectors to one vector. Okay, so we got to do that for each one where they meet. <clears throat> so zoom in right there, right there. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Okay. Oh, that one's kind of off. Snip. Snip. I don't like how that came out. I'm not happy with that right there. I'll fix that later. It looks like it was off when I lined them up next to each other. Okay. They're all set. Okay, now instead of doing that all over completely, what we're going to do is select it and we're going to copy the whole image or the whole vector for that stripe. Control C, Control V, and we're just going to slide this one down. Make sure it's lined up. There you go. Control C, Control V, slide. Make sure it's lined up. That's a little off. And obviously you can play with it. This is a tutorial. So um, if I was doing this like <clears throat> for somebody and they wanted me to do it, I'd really take my time and go fix all those little inconsistencies. Um, but for this demonstration purposes, this is, this is suffice. Okay. All right. So I can delete these. So see, it's coming together. Got that. 
to do control C, control V. Swing this over. And then, all right, control C, control V, swing it over. We're going to have to take some of these off, though. So I'll show you how to fix it. Okay, so you want to ungroup. These and I don't know why it's doing that. Delete those. Hold on. Oh, I know why it's doing it. Cause I cut all the loops out and they made it one thing. So I have to actually have to fix that. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is just pull the original vector in and then just add that. So I'll select that. All right, there's my batarang. Let's rotate it. move it into place all right grab it just kind of hover it over the other one and just kind of match up the size right there it's money all right link them up and then let's create another copy. That is really bugging me. Let me fix that. Select the object. Let's rotate it up a little. Okay, that's good. That's better. Line it up as best you can. There you go. <clears throat> And I'm sure there's probably a better way of doing this. I mean, if you know a better way, just leave it in the comments. Or <clears throat> you can, you know, just do it yourself. Like, if you see something, a better way of doing it. <clears throat> yeah. All right, so this is a little problem because it's too long. But <clears throat> we want to keep the consistency consistency of the flags right so we're gonna just shrink it just a little just so we're not losing the bat so first let's just grab all these and then we're going to shrink them together here just to go just a little Okay, so it changes it slightly, but it keeps it intact. Okay. All right, <clears throat> so we're going to actually have to go in there and snip these. So highlight the new ones. Select the scissor, interactive trim. Zoom in. And this is all janky. Cut. Cut. Close. One cut. All right, here's another. Oh, those aren't even, those aren't even connected. So when you see it like that, you can just select it, and then you're just gonna move it over. All right, so you want to move. Slightly, perfect. All right, we're gonna have to trim that. We'll probably have to do that for the other one, too. We gotta, we gotta slide it over. <clears throat> All 
All right, zoom in. We're going to cut it or trim it. And I think there's one left. Nope, that's it. All right, select the thing, delete. Okay, looks good. Make sure those are all grouped. All right, so now we can just click on this, control C. You can hit it twice, actually, control V twice to do two copies. Grab it, drag it over. Get it lined up. Right, that looks pretty good. Nope, no it doesn't. It's gotta go up a little and a little bit. There you go. All right, so grab the other one, the other copy, I'm gonna move it. <clears throat> and drop it down for the bottom. It's all centered. Double check it here. Nope, it needs to go over a little. Perfect. All right, the stripes are done. Just delete the extra stripes and you're done. Okay, so this is what it looks like. All right, so that's the big version. All right, <clears throat> I already did the, if you remember, the first toolpath, 3D view. Oh, not showing. So we'll do a preview real quick. All right, there we go. So that's the preview. All right, <clears throat> for these next, for the stripes, I'm actually going to do a quick engrave carve. All right, so... Just for demonstration purposes only, I'm skipping this line, and I'll show you why, just for demonstration purposes. All right, so I'm going to make this its own cut toolpath. Oh, whoops. Okay, we're going to do, see the letter T, quick engraving toolpath. We're going to click that. All right, we're going to use a 90 degree, half inch V-bit. You can use a 60 degree, quarter inch if you'd like. I just prefer the 90 degree, half inch. 0 0.045 inches depth slash pressure. And let's go down here. We're going to do calculate. Close it. Go into preview. Preview visible toolpath. Okay. So there you go. Now, <clears throat> I highlight the bottom. Well, this is what I do because I want to see the paint scheme I want to do. The quick engrave. Change the toolpath color in the upper hand right. We're going to change that to a gray. Okay. I like this one. And that's how I'm going to make those bats. Now, to keep in theme with what I like to do, we're going to do this one. And I'm going to make this wall one cut, but I want to do this for demonstration purposes so I can see how it's going to look after I paint it. So, same type of cut, quick engrave toolpath. Calculate. We're going to do preview. Preview visible. It cuts that. And we want to make that yellow. And there we go. And there is a quick demonstration of how I'm going to make my Batman flag for my superhero series coming up. Um, just a couple other things you can look at. I always like to look at the time it takes to cut it. So I'm going to click on the tool pass in the corner. You got this little box that says summary of all tool pass. I click it. And it brings up the time for each schedule cut. Cut one for the pocketing for the bat logo. It says 27 minutes. I'm actually going to speed this up and like increase it. It's going to take about 13 minutes. The quick engrave, about six minutes plus that, so seven minutes. So overall, it's going to only take about 
25 to 30 minutes to do this complete cut. Um, if that, and then obviously you want to paint it, so it'll take a little extra time for painting it. Um, that's it. That's my Batman, my take on the Batman flag for my superhero, se superhero series. Let me know what you think in the comments if you like this video. If you feel I missed any steps, or if you like would like me to go in depth on some certain things that you feel I didn't get into enough, um, please let me know. Um, my next video following this will actually be the video of me cutting the flag, painting it, and seeing how it comes out, okay? So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, give it a like. I appreciate it, um, and I'll see you next time.